were also one of the few commercial drummers who were in our faces who got endorsements, right? Yeah, yeah. It was Yamaha for the drum kit, Zildjian yeah. for the cymbals, Pro and, and Promark for your sticks. So you don't buy anything now. And Evans for the skins, and Alpi for the percussions. Hey, man. Go deeper. Is that, is, that, is that all? And Yamaha for the speakers and the electronic gear. No, no, no. They, they yeah. give you everything. Yeah, exactly. They, they, so, they, they look after you, hey? Yeah. So, so I didn't know you were going to ask me about these things. Um, but I'm fighting the system that ignores fathers. I'm fighting the system that doesn't show up for us fast enough for our children to be safe. You know, mm. because if you take a, a father out of the home, the child's stability is immediately affected. The child's foundation is immediately affected. So, but the other thing is, from what we're seeing, you were having your time of your life with Lira. You were traveling everywhere, and I heard that you were getting paid, even if there were no gigs, so that you were exclusive to her. No. That's not true. No. No. <laughs> no. My brother... Let's talk to. Let's talk about uh, the reason why you came here today. I'm you know? so scared. <laughs> you know, that's what hurt me to hear my ex pastor speak like that of us when we were waiting for money. We were struggling. We were like coming out of COVID. You know, I was seven fifty. Seven hundred and fifty rand. I left the church where I was getting more money to go and serve there because. I know Pastor Fabian. I love Pastor Fabian. I respect Pastor Fabian. Mm. There is no, there's no uh, old wounds when mm. it comes. I only remember Pastor Fabian as a great minister. And Our ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And thank you very much for joining us on this new year, 2024. And this year is going to be a great year because of the guy I have in studio today. But without any further ado, let me welcome you back. And like we say in, in, in the United States of Hamanskral, happy. That simply means happy new year to each and every one of you. Please tell your friends, please tell your family to ensure that they subscribe. If you subscribe, you make us, you propel us to the next level, you know. They say it's 2024, 2020 galore, 2020 what? 2020 more of what God has in store. 2020 more of what God has in store. And he yeah. said it first on the Gospel Reality Podcast. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, today I've got a person. I know he's younger than me, but he's, he's been my hero for the, from, from my drumming years, you know. When I started drumming, I thought, you know what, one day I'm going to play like that. But at the same breath, I also said I'm going to be rich. None of those came to pass, but he's here to <laughs> chop it up <laughs> with us. And it's Mr. J-Star. Yeah. Do you call it Joshua J-Star or J-Star? These, name I've got, these days I've got different aliases, J-Star and Pastor Abdul. So, yeah. We'll Pastor get into Abdul? It. Yes, Pastor Abdul. Hey, man, don't tell us you've, you've gone left. No, eh? no, no. Abdul Pella is that, that other one. Yeah, it's a, it's a name of oneness, but we can get into it if you want to. Oh, really? Yeah. Please, please. It's a name of? Oneness. Right. Oneness. Yeah, right now, um, my, my past and my, where I come from, I'm a pastor's kid. Yeah. My whole history and life has been about Christianity and, you know. Yeah. And um, going into the world was always like uh, Islam and, you know, it always seemed very opposite to what we do as Christians, you yeah. know. So going into the world, I found so much love and appreciation in people that weren't necessarily Christians. Mm. Like they would, they would, like when I went to Egypt, the love I received there all over the world, it was always like the world that we don't know was like the Abdul. You know, it's like the, the, it's like the, the opposite of Christianity. Uh. So you're stepping into a different world that you don't know, right? Yeah. So the word pastor means shepherd, mm -hmm. and the word Abdul means servant, right? Oh, okay. So as Jaista, I can't be the shepherd and the servant of anything other than drums. Okay. Do you understand? Because when you hear Jaista, you think the drummer. Mm. But I'm a producer, I'm a singer, I'm everything else. But in order to present it to the world, I had to come up with a new alias that represents something new. Okay. So Pastor Abdul is the shepherd and the servant of a new sound, a message, music, beyond the drum sound, which is represented by Jaista. Ah. Do you understand? So. Hey. So from where I come from, the past uh, um, 
being like being a pastor's kid and going yeah. into the world and seeing what the world is about and how to get into the world because we have platforms that pastors never get as mm -hmm. musicians you know mm -hmm. we go and we we meet people we can evangelize in spaces where you'll never see a pastor there mm -hmm. so i feel like god has sent me out into the world as one of his agents ah, to go do his work there i see you know and it and i evolved while doing that Really? So I cannot box myself into J Star because J Star can only do so much. I need to ask you this. You're still born again? Yes, my brother. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I was getting confused. No, there. no, no. <laughs> Listen, the Abdul <laughs> thing is just sometimes I'm a shepherd right. as a leader. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a servant. When I yeah. work for people and I play for someone, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a servant. You're I a servant. get into servanthood. Mm -hmm. But when someone asks me to lead, I step up. Ah, yeah. I see. So J Star has been a servant. I see. But Pastor see. Abdul is a shepherd. Yeah. You understand? This guy is a prolific pl pl drummer. A proper drummer. And I think, I, I remember uh, when I saw you in close pr proximity playing the Union Building. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It was the first time I see Chops. Yo. Like, on that level, Are eh? You're talking about the uh, inauguration? Long ago, in, in yes, yes. Yeah, Zuma's inauguration. Yes. Yeah, wow. And then, I, I don't know, it was sound check, and you just went up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, we were sound checking. And it was a sort I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's heavy so it was um i think you introduced the new i would say american um, chops to south africa and we've always known it on on youtube but i think you you brought it very close to us i said hey this man this man this yeah. man this man <laughs> I, I didn't know that a lot of people are telling me that because mm. i just didn't have i was listening to music i didn't have youtube i never internet mm. so i was playing my heart out like when you listen to Christ Christian Harmony, I don't know if yeah. you've heard of Christian Harmony. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, um, I was playing like that back then, so I didn't know it was so different or so new or received in that way. Yeah. But I'm glad that God made me that person in the industry because yeah. every time I meet people, I realize that the book I'm writing right now, mm -hmm. the called The Blind Leader, yeah, it's literally about that. The really? day I look back and I realize that while living by faith, God made me a leader. Mm -hmm. So it made me a responsible person. It made me not one of falter because now people are looking at J-Star. Oh, j is doing this. Oh, it works for J-Star. Yeah. So I'm becoming an opinion leader, yeah. which means my opinion must be God-centered. Yeah. So that people can find their failures and their successes in God. Wow, Feel me? man. Wow. Yeah. Hey, this guy from uh, Facebook to, to here. Hey, who is this? <laughs> 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 Th 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 uh, okay, let me leave that big word. So, my brother, you're from Eldorado Park, right? Yeah, Eldorado Extension 3. You grew up in Eldorado Park. Yeah. I know Eldorado Park as a violent part in the corner of Soweto, right? Yeah. I've been there once. Hey, Jela Squire. Eh? So, there's <laughs> there's Eldorado Park and there's um, North Yeah. So, I, I grew up in Orlando, Soweto. Okay. So, North Chasek, Eldorado Park, yeah. and it was strong colored communities. Yeah. And I, I, we cannot skip the gangsters there. I remember we used to, there was a swimming pool in North Kasek. We'd go swim there. Mm. And on our way back, they'll, they'll line us up and search us. Uh -huh. If you've got money, Jay, Gomiso. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they searched us. And unfortunately, they found nothing. Uh -huh. So um, in, in later years, then I went to Eldorado Park. Mm -hmm. Then I saw it's also a strong colored community. Yeah. And you, you see in the corners there. Uh, guys driving three two fives, you can see. I'd assume those are gangsters. And, yeah. I, and after that, I said I'm not going back to that place again. Uh -huh. But people like you yourself, Patrick Duncan, Duncan, and the others were raised from that. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you ever get involved in gangsterism? No, no, no. Music saved my life, man. I mean, hey. God saved my life yeah. through music. Let me say that because mm. I was I was literally raised in a Christian home. Yep. Um, your mom and dad yeah, being... Yeah, mom and dad being pastors and yeah. uh, missionaries and, you know, like serving the community. And mm -hmm. we were the lighthouse in the community. Ah. So um, if I was hanging out with someone who's not really cool, it would be because I'm trying to see if I can't convince you to come meet me at church or, really? you know, come join the dance crew. I had a dance crew also, you oh, know. Oh, yes, you were a leader of the dance crew. Yes, yes. you know, so, so very early I became this leader that, that was evangelizing. I didn't know what evangelizing was, but mm. I knew that reaching out to young people, trying to get them to come to youth and, you know, so really? I was never involved in those things. I was always someone trying to get my friends to stop smoking or, you know, like, ah, bro, why are you doing this? Mm. Or, you know, so, so I was the boring kid 
The one that when people want to have fun, they yeah. tell me that, no, we're not doing anything today, but tomorrow I find out they did something. You know? And <laughs> because I was so like, no, 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 guys, ish. I don't want to disappoint my parents. No, and that's cool because yeah. I checked your, your, your family. Yeah. <laughs> Plethora of musicians. Yeah. So all of you guys are musicians? Yeah, all of us. My sisters sing, my brothers also sing, but we play mostly instruments. Yeah? You know? Your brother's a heavy keyboard player, man. Yeah, maestro. Uh, yeah. No? Uh, and, 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 and as a family, do you guys have a band? Yeah, we do. Besides Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Well, Ecclesiastes. That, wasn't, that wasn't the Zacchaeus family yeah. band. But um, a lot of you guys were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, me, my, just me, Joe, and Debbie was there. Was just three of us. Four of you guys. Three? Yeah, only three of us. Okay. Were there. But um, the Zacchaeus family plan Z. We call it plan Z when we come together yeah. because we've done everything from plan A to Z. And we are the final plan. You know, we, we can only do us. <laughs> so, um, so plan Z, we do function together as a family. Mm. Uh, when we do, it's very difficult. Obviously, people are married yeah. and, you know, families. But, yeah, we do perform together you as a family. And it's, it's magic, man. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And you guys, there's 12 of you. Yeah, there's 12 of us. <laughs> and 20, 20 small kids, like grandchildren, yeah. you know? Really? Yeah. And that is strong, eh? Yeah. 12. And 20 grandkids. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I'm on, I'm on two. <laughs> I, need to, I, need to, I need to work. And there's something very important you speak about on your social media, right? Mm -hmm. Your daughter. Yeah. And I can see, and I, I see how you light up when you speak about your daughter. And, and I, th I think I saw it on social media when guys are saying, fathers of today, you know, they're turning up, you know. They want to be involved in, in, in their kids' uh, upbringing. They yeah. want to see their kids. And, and when I heard your story, when you said your story on social media, that mm -hmm. you had to fight to, to actually see your kids, to see your kid, yeah. your, your daughter, in Cape Town, to be, to be more, more exact. Um, is it still a struggle now? Um, so I didn't know you were going to ask me about these things. Um, I mean, I'm fighting the devil at the moment mm. because it's only the devil that removes a father from our home because that's how he weakens the structure Ooh. so as much as i want to say things have gotten better i mean i saw my daughter for christmas now mm -hmm. but i'm fighting the system that ignores fathers i'm fighting the system that doesn't show up for us fast enough for our children to be safe you mm. know because if you take a, a father out of the home the child's stability is immediately affected the child's foundation is immediately affected. So if I come to you and say, help me, I want to be there for my child. If you take three months, my child has gone three months without, without me being there, without you saying, hey, let's make sure you see your child. You know, so I feel like I'm not just fighting um, my baby mama to see my child. Mm. I'm fighting the enemy. Ooh. I'm fighting the darkness, the principalities that's spoken about in the word because... Mm. My daughter's purpose is confirmed in this, in this attack. Mm. I, I know that God has a plan for her, based on how her stability and foundation is attacked, mm. through me being attacked. Because mm. I'm trying to be there, I'm trying to be present. I get on 19-hour bus to see my child for four hours and come back. Yeah, you know? It's like going to Nordkasak to see my cherry quickly there in mm. the colored community, and then leaving because the brothers are going to chow me after <laughs> 7 o'clock. So four hours in, four hours out. Literally there. Yeah. But um, thanks to God that um, I managed to get more time, sleep over visitation. I've been through everything. False allegations, GBV court, criminal court, everything. You know? And I'm the applicant at the family court. Yeah. So for me to be the applicant and still see, oh, even when she comes and says I'm suicidal, now I've got to go for psychiatric evaluation, but I came to you for help. Oh, so I that's see. what kills fathers. A lot of fathers are not there and are, are called deadbeat because when they give up, that's what's told. But other fathers fight, like me, I've been fighting for three years and I've been feeling like I should just give up. Like, I mean, I cannot even, mm. but I know the moment I give up, they won't tell the child that your father's been in every courtroom trying to defend, be there for uh. you. They're just gonna say, I left you. Ooh. And my best friend, mind you, killed himself in my situation. Mm. You know, he came to me one day, he cried about how he wants to see his daughter. Didn't have a child then, I didn't understand mm. it. Two months later, he's gone. And now I'm in that situation. Now I realize the devil wants to scare us into submission. 
He uses the to toxicity and bitterness of women to scare men into submission because God's command for us is go forth and multiply. Mm. But if I'm scared of what women might do, I'm going to protect and Stay keep my seed, which means I've allowed the enemy to dictate over what God has commanded. So I, even though I'm going through baby mama drama and I've, my fight for my daughter, I will get married. I will have a family. Hmm. Because Be I trust man. God. I don't let the devil scare me. And then, I mean, since the 90s, I've heard, oh, no, drumming is a hobby. Oh, what are you doing? I didn't believe those people. Today, I'm J-Star. I'm, I'm endorsed. I'm worldwide known because I did not let people dictate for me. Hmm. Same thing with my family. Oh, wow. My daughter, even though I'm under attack for her, yeah. I will fight and I will bring my sons into this world mm. because they need to stand on what I'm building. Uh, Do you understand? So that, that's that's beautiful, yeah. man. And you know, I've got I've got two boys, but people keep telling me there's something special about having a, a girl child, and I can feel it. You know, it's Bro. it's it's, Bro. it's Bro. oh, is that is that? It's my baby right there. Hey, man. You know, I wear on my heart, on my on my on my um, sleeve. Yeah. You know, I wear on my chest. She, yesterday she called me, she broke the law. Because I'm only supposed to call her after six for 10 minutes. Mm. Can't call her during the day. Really? Yeah. Yes, bro. Like, you, this is what I'm saying. I didn't know you can ask me about these things, but let me just explain to you. Okay. Yesterday, like Sunday, I was so down, bro. Crying, literally missing my child because Sunday is a family day for me. Yeah. I don't want to wake up and, what am I going to do? Mm. I want to be with my child. So mm. it was one of those hard days for me. Bro... She called me. While I'm crying, my mm. phone rang and I'm looking at my phone and it's harmony. Daddy, I miss you. Daddy, fetch me. You know? Later on in the day, my phone rings again. Daddy, come on. I can't see you outside. Where are you? And I realized she mm. can feel that bond, bro. You know? And this is why I and stayed in Cape Town. What did that do to you, man? Well, it made me feel better, but it actually hurt me more because it means that the people around her can see her cry out for her dad. Mm. But when I show up Father's Day, they didn't open up and give me my child. When I showed up November, they didn't have my child there waiting for me. No, she's not here. She's in Naisna. When I come Christmas, oh, no, she's not here. Do you understand? So every time I get there, someone can break the law. Someone can go against the order. Mm. But I've got to stay in line. Because as a man, you will get locked up. And mm. Paul's Mall is a place I've been dying to not go to. Mm. Do you understand? So as a man, I know what it's like to be in a position where you've been pushed into a box where, okay, tiptoe on your eggshells, but you watch other people recklessly break the law because they've got money, they've got influence, they, you know, <laughs> at the expense of your daughter. Because remember, the only yeah. person struggling here is my daughter. Mm. I've got a father, I can call him now. Mm. And my baby mama can call her father and her mother now. But the only one who doesn't have free access to the other parent is my daughter. So the one who ignores the child is the abusing the child. Do you mm. understand? If you ignore the child who can clearly speak and say, mm. I want to go to my daddy, I must my daddy, daddy crying one way. That shows you. You know, but the law allows that because it's the woman doing it. Hey, hey man, I need to tear, man. <laughs> How to hold it in? You better my hold brother, it, bro, because you're going to open brother. me up. You better hold my it, bro. My goodness. You better hold Shoot. it, bro. I've been holding it like, <sighs> too long. <laughs> and know? the system, and you say the system never helped you. Um, the system made me jump through all the hoops, psych mm -hmm. um, well, psychiatric evaluation for starters. Mm -hmm. um, then I have to have supervised visits. Mm -hmm. I'm not crazy, but now someone has to watch me in a small room like this with my daughter for four hours. I have no toys, nothing, you know, for months. And then there's a report, oh, no, um, Mr. Zekis is a good father by the, by the social mm -hmm. worker who observed. Then, okay, now you can have um, your child for four hours unsupervised, mm -hmm. you know? So it's small steps, but it's like it kills you inside because mm -hmm. remember how much it cost me to get to Cape Town? accommodate myself, the Ubers. Mm. And then if I want to see her another day or for, for four hours again, I've got to wait. Today's Tuesday, right? Mm. If, I, if I saw her today from one to five, I've got to wait the whole Thursday, uh, the whole um, Thursday and only Friday again, or the whole Thursday, on, all Wednesday, and only Thursday, one till five again. If I want to see her again, Saturday, one till five again. So 
That's why sometimes I go in, 10 o'clock I'm there, 1 o'clock I pick up, 5 o'clock I drop off, 6 I'm back on the bus. Because I don't have the money to stay over. I just have bus fee money. Oh my God. You know? But that's what I did to be there for my child. I was homeless for seven months in Cape Town. My parents were like, come home, come home. I'm like, if I leave you, this child will not know me. Wait a minute, you were homeless? Yeah, I was floating in COVID when people couldn't help me. They were protecting their families. I left Joburg to be a present father, remember? Yeah. Right? I posted about it that I'm moving to Cape Town, it's COVID, my daughter's down there. And then while I was there, things went wrong. I found out that someone's not being faithful mm. and suddenly I'm kicked out. Now I'm homeless, you know? And then since that day, it's been cops, it's been caught, it's been... I've been sit, I sit outside with my laptop bag, talking to homeless people, sharing food just to find safety, sleeping under a tree in Woodstock. Though that serious? was my life. And people who don't know, in Cape Town, you've been in Cape Town plenty. Bro, Playing since with different, different artists sleep, yes. sleeping in the best, best hotels. Best hotels, exactly. Exactly. To be roaming Woodstock uh, there for hours, not knowing what to do, sitting with people, trying to fall asleep, scared you're going to get robbed. That's my life, sitting outside the courtroom with the Rastas, doing my hair, talking to the pastor, asking him to hold my bag there while I see my daughter, all those things. The in people at the Internet Cafe at Athlone knows me mm. because even on the Athlone corner, from the guys selling the acne there mm. to the people selling fruits, I'm one of them. When I go to Cape Town, I jump off there, I leave my laptop bags and stuff with the guys on the corner and I go see my daughter. Because through COVID, those are the people that were there for me. Wow. Wow. So, wow. Wow, wow. Do you think... Um, uh, I need to understand this. What happened between you and your baby mama? Did it take a nosedive when your things started going south? Or when, um, or when the money was there, everything was fine, but when, when, it, when it went down, that's when things went... Uh... Not necessarily. Um... Man, I cannot believe you asked me so much about this. But um, I'm probably going to be the first man to admit that I was trapped. Mm. I was trapped by my baby mama. I thought that her parents didn't want us to have this child, and mm. I protected her from her parents. I stood up as the man to say, mm. don't traumatize your daughter. My daughter's growing inside of her. So if you're going to attack her, you're attacking me too. Because, mm. But these people were never my fans. Ah, he's a musician, he's not good enough, we wanted better for you. Hmm. So of course, already I was not qualified to be their daughter, their daughter's husband or boyfriend, mm -hmm. you know? So when we still had a child, they were against the fact that, you know, they were saying things like, this could have been avoided, we can't keep, believe you keeping this child. Yep. So I was like, wait, I'm gonna have to protect you from your own parents. But then COVID came and then we were vulnerable. We mm. needed help. And now someone wants to go home. Mm. Someone wants to be by our family. Ooh. and leaves with the child and doesn't come back to Joburg to understand. Yeah. So when I got to Cape Town, we were still together, things were fine, whatever, but now I'm in my enemy's house. Mm. I'm eating off their table. Mm. I'm sleeping in their house, to understand. And unfortunately, while living there, I found out that my girlfriend was unfaithful mm. while my daughter was still very small. Oh my God. Knowing that the moment I disclosed that I know what you're doing with, mm -hmm. I'll be homeless. And lo and behold, we had an argument, sent her the message to say, I know what you're doing. I sent her the screen grabs. Since that day, she blocked me. Till this day, we've never had a conversation. I've been through hell. She's never, ever had a conversation with me yeah. so that we can do better for our child. It's mm. just been, since that day, she's never spoken to me like this. Jo and that's the 7th of December, 2020. That's the last day we spoke. Oh my goodness. So since then, I've been in every courtroom defending every allegation, going through the worst. I mean, I didn't even have lawyers, I didn't have money. I didn't have, I, I, at some point, I was there defending myself with notes. Bro, the thought of standing there, going up against another lawyer, while you're homeless, while you don't have food, mm. my bank account's closed, my policies lapsed, I lost my BMW, I have nothing, I don't have food. Literally waking up from that, I had, listen, I had friends. I would, I would love to not mention their names, but um, I have friends that were helping me sleep on my couch for a week or, you know, like musician here, there's a chef that was mm -hmm. also working in the States that was sent home, mm -hmm. help me, yo, come stay here for a week. 
then I overstay. Now it's becoming uncomfortable it's because I don't really have somewhere to go. You know, now it's the mental pressure, it's the stress. It was the worst time of my life to be alive. Wow. My brother, I think you, you're getting me very emotional on this one. Um, I've heard you. It, it, I don't wish this on anyone. It, 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 it must be the toughest thing trying to defend your child, an innocent child who just wants to see you, but they don't see the hurdles you go through just to spend that four hours with them. It was two. It used to be two hours. Two. And, the, and they give me the child sleeping um, routine, like when mm. her nap time. I get there 20 minutes later, she's asleep. Yeah. And I've got two hours. That's why most of my earlier pictures with my daughter, you'll see she's sleeping mm. on my chest. Do you understand? When I was at the social development office uh, under supervised visits, I would sleep on a carpet like this, no pillows, nothing, with her on my chest. Because I don't have to, I, no, nothing I can do, but I'm seeing her in a nap time. So I was upset because it's traumatizing her. Every time, daddy, 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 and then she wakes up, I'm gone. Mm. I'm like, no, man, give me more time. That's why I went to the family court. Because I was like, ah, two hours. I've moved here, and you guys give me two hours. Mm. But then people come up with their own things. I mean, I lived with them. The moment I fetched my clothes and stuff from the house where I lived, when I go to court, yeah, he's stealing out of our house. All the, so you've got to defend so many allegations in. And you're like, without a lawyer. 100%. So, so just imagine. Mm. I'm just going to leave it there. Just mm. imagine. Bruh, you know? I've been imagining ever since you, you started talking about yeah. this. But there's something very pe uh, peculiar about this, this uh, uh, um, man versus woman, you know. With men, there's so many uh, repercussions. You could go to jail for this, you know. That. But it seems like women, uh, I've seen uh, instances when women accuse, falsely accuse guys of rape. There's no repercussions. Mm -mm. When a woman blocks no. a man to see, there's no repercussions. That's why they keep doing it. That's the biggest problem. There's no consequences. A man, you and I, mm. and that man right there behind the camera, mm. bro, we know to not even get into fights with each other because of how the law will respond to our violent Correct. behavior towards each other. Mm. So we, we could have messed up our lives in high school fighting the wrong dude. 100%. Our whole lives, we go off disciplining yourself to keep yourself out of jail. I'm not going to go and punch my baby mama. Mm -hmm. while I'm trying to see my daughter. I know that the consequence of that is jail, which means I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. I don't even see my family, no one. Correct. You know? But the law responds as, as if men have no control, as if they've never seen that, wait a minute, this man, is, he showed up. He's here, he's trying, he's the applicant. They treat you as if you are the most violent guy. They treat it as if there's no st statistics of women doing this to men. You know? So if there were more... If there were more consequences, women would also be scared. Hey, I'm going to get fined. Yo, I'll have to, hey. Uh, uh, uh. I'll lose the child. So, unfortunately, Joshua Zekas has to make an example of someone too. Not mm. here, not now. It will happen. Mm. So that the law can change. Because after I spoke about Lira, many musicians called me and said, bro, we are getting treated much better now. Yo, our fees have gone up. Oh, yo, our rehearsal fees. Yo, someone needs to speak. Before we go to, to the Lira story, I want to talk about your drumming. Quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But now, yeah, because it's tied into that. But correct. I'm just saying, someone 100%. needs to speak up. From the baby mama thing, from the drama with my daughter, unfortunately, I have to be that guy again that speaks for fathers, yeah. which I wish I didn't have to be. Wow. Whew. Hey, man, I thought we were going to talk about... Uh, Me too. Yeah. Me too, bro. <laughs> Our next intimate is getting... To... Let's talk about your drumming, man. Um, you said your daughter's name is Harmony. Harmony. That's the first band I've ever played for, Christian Harmony. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I named her after, after that band. I thought it would be Paradiddle or something. Nah, nah, nah. Not Rudiment. <laughs> Rudamisha. <laughs> no, Guys, don't steal that name. Rudamisha. I know there's a few dramas out here with pregnant wives, maybe. Rudamisha was the option. But man, you've got, um, you were also one of the few commercial drummers who are in our faces who got endorsements, right? Yeah, yeah. It was Yamaha for the drum kit, Zildjian yeah. for the cymbals, Pro and, Mark. and Pro Mark for your sticks. So you don't buy anything now. And Evans for the skins, and Alpi for the percussions. Hey, man. <laughs> Go deeper. Is that, is that, is that all? 
and you're half of the speakers and the electronic gear. No, no, no. They, they yeah. give you everything. Yeah, exactly. They, they, so, they, they look after you, hey? Yeah. So... I just, wanna, I just wanna find out in, in endorsement, and let's, let's just break the myth of endorsements uh, uh, real quickly. So endorsements, they, they, they need to, they approach you, right? Or do you apply? How does it work? Um, if I have to speak about my experience. Yeah, your experience. Um, yeah. I was working with Danny K at the time. Yeah. And um, I used to play Yamaha, on, it was on my rider, but I never yeah. had a drum kit. Okay. So he asked me one day, so how do you practice? I'm like, no man. Mm-hmm. I read this book called Mind Power mm-hmm. about people making the hoop, visualizing themselves. So I would rehearse in my head. I would play mm-hmm. drums like I'm playing in my head. Yeah. When I get to the drums, I can do it. Yeah. You know? So when I explained that to him, he's like, no, man, let me introduce you to the Yamaha guys. I feel like you are the guy right mm-hmm. now in the industry. Let's have a meeting. Yeah, he yeah. took me there. We had a meeting with Mike. Yeah. And they saw what I could do. They checked what I've been doing. And they were like, we want to invest in you. And that's where it went. So it... It was one of those endorsements that once they believed in me, it was easier for other brands to believe in me. But it didn't just come oh, after. You know, Zildjian came years later. Proma came years later. It was up to me to show how faithful I am in the first fruit that I got. Yeah. And how I treat this and how much I do with that. Mm. Nokia came on board. I had the Nokia ad. People could his. see like, oh, Jay's. You know, so it made things more... It gave it more substance. Like it, yeah, and Hannah. that's how... The endorsements came. And what I want to understand about uh, uh, endorsements is they obviously want you to advertise the brand. Yeah, And yeah, yeah. if you're playing on TV or a, or a recording, you must use their brand. Yes, 100%. So the misconception uh, with, 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 with some guys is, and yeah. this is what I want to answer because I heard you ask it somehow. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys are reaching out to endorsements. They want the people to endorse them. Yeah. But right now, everybody's doing so well on social media you really have to be someone who's consistent someone who's been doing someone who doesn't want the brand to give them the thing so they can push it mm. you must already have invested in what you say you believe in uh, 100%. you understand um i spoke to a young guy once and he's like no 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 i play sabian right now but i want zildjian to endorse me man i'm like but you're showing Sab- uh, zildjian mm. that you've already invested your money mm-hmm. in sabian and not them so when they have to get on board with you, it's like, oh, we've got to convince you to use what we, mm. you know? You're not showing us that you already love our product. Our yeah. product. So it's very important for the young guys who want endorsements to understand that. Be consistent. Be out there. Tag the brands. Don't do it to get the endorsement. Let them see you. Mm. But the moment you say, pick me, pick me, there's a thousand amazing drummers saying, pick me. Correct. So you go unseen. Go do the work. Be consistent. Even if you've got two, three gigs and they seem big, it's not enough to get an endorsement. Mm. Because you must be an opinion leader. You must be someone who someone can say, oh no, he plays those sticks, I'm going to play those sticks. Oh, Josh has got wooden hoops on his Mm. snare. I also want wooden hoops. That's why we get endorsed. Because guys went and looked for the wooden hoops. Guys went, yo, I want a Kira Jumbo snare. Yo, I want these Anatolian symbols. Because they know who to endorse. Because they can see Ah. these people will be able They've to get... influence. Yes, and, influence. And, and you people know? are following them. Exactly. So it's not that you don't get endorsed because you're not good enough or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just to the brand, maybe you, they don't see how, how valuable you can be right now. Mm-hmm. But it mustn't discourage you. Just keep going. So what I want to ask you is, like Pro Mark Sticks and, and Zildjian and Yamaha, have they shown you records that ever since we've endorsed you, the, 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 the sales on this particular brand has shot up? Ever since we've endorsed you, like a proven mm-hmm. track record, do they, do they um, show that? They've never shown me that, but I mean, uh, I'm with them for 16 years right now. Ooh. They've had six years, they've had 10 years, they've had 14 years, mm. and they had 16 years to say, ah, by now we can see. Yeah. Change just a waste of our time. Yeah. You know, so I believe that what they're seeing from my side yeah. is, is good enough. And most importantly, yeah. is there monetary value in terms of today? Um, I know that, that, that some Americans get paid, yeah, 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 yeah. but do, is that... Ponzo, please turn this uh, fan towards this man. Yeah, I'm swearing, man. Yeah, he's... Uh, I can, I can it's see you and your questions. Yeah, I know, these questions, eh? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I just want him... Yeah, it must just yeah, face him. Is just that better? Him. Yeah, it's perfect. Ah, you Thank see. you, man. We, we, we want to make sure that you, you're comfortable. Stay you know? cool, yeah. yeah. Hey, but hey, you bring up the heat, <laughs> eh? So is there monetary value in that thing? Um... For me, honestly, uh, I make enough money off my gigs mm-hmm. with my sponsored gear mm-hmm. 
to not be and do not put Yama under pressure for money okay. right now because it enables me. To, I'm so equipped. I'm well equipped okay. to function fully. Okay. So, if we grow towards payment, praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. If we don't, I am still as blessed as I never thought I would be. Hundred percent. You know what I mean. And 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 you play the top kits, man. Exactly. Yeah. You know. And I'm not a greedy man. I don't have five drum kits standing in my. I don't want to be one of those drummers that. You see me, I've got all these kids. Bro, there are guys dying to have drums. I told you, I don't want to stock up things. I'm not a hoarder. Mm. I want what I need. Yep. I never take more than what I need. Yep. You know? And that's how I teach people. I'm like, yo, guys, when you get into this endorsement space, don't be the guy that's like, yeah, I want this, 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 this. Then you go see all this stuff. Of course, some guys lost their endorsements because they would sell the stuff off. Mm -hmm. They get the stuff and they're like, oh, no, 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 I need this. Then they sell it. So you've got to be a person of integrity and an honest person mm. if you want to step into those spaces because the devil will tempt you. Mm. I got many offers to say, hey, Josh, come play this brand, come uh, take these sticks. And I said, but guys, I asked God for Promark. Why must I go where you want me to go? Like, if I take this, it's like, it's like I'm saying, ah, oh, God is taking too long, you know? <laughs> so it's patience. It's a fruit of the spirit. No, 100%. Yeah. Wow, that, that's, actually, that's, that's actually dope, man. That's actually dope. And... I love when I check the list of the people you brought up, like your youngest brother, yeah. you, you brought him up to play for Patrick Duncan's DVD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got him the Yamaha deal? Or no, uh, Limo doesn't, he's not endorsed by Yamaha, but obviously he's but under he plays, my But he plays Yamaha. Well, when he plays on my shows, he, he uses what I use, but he's not endorsed. He doesn't have gear. Oh, I thought uh, Yamaha... Maestro now. Yeah. Maestro is, is sponsored by Yamaha yeah. as well. But so, I thought your young brother is, is, gets, gets gear because I always see him with Yamaha everywhere. So that's your gear. That's when we play together, yes. Ah. So, I mean, he's, I love his journey because um, I can only imagine how difficult it is for people to expect you to do what your brother did. Yeah. And I love the fact that he's taken his time to do what he needs to do. He's a okay. hydroponic farmer. You know, Nemo is someone else. Mm. But he's stepping into his light. He's busy with, the, he's, with his own tape. Nemo's rapping, he's singing. Never thought Nemo would become this. So I'm glad that it's happening on its own and not odd. Josh was endorsed, Nemo's endorsed. It's like, it looks like a family thing, like mm. we're just sneaking. No, no, no. I want things to happen as naturally for him as it did for him so that he feels blessed, not because his brother. Yeah. Ah, da, 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 but da. you're obviously doing you know? your part to make sure that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when I have a platform, I put my people on. I, I make sure that people see because yeah. we are out here competing against everyone who's competing with yeah. us. We cannot compete. Yeah. We dare not compete with each other. Correct. Yeah. And, wow. And uh, this man, which artist didn't you work with? I mean, I wrote down here. Asha. Right? <laughs> Chris Brown, Michael Jackson. No, no, no. Before, before we move past <laughs> drumming, right? Uh -huh. Who is your ultimate drummer? Marvin Makuti, man. Huh? Marvin Makuti. The, the auto passed away. Yeah, he, man. Um, Fred Hammond. He used to play for, for, for yeah. Fred Hammond. Fred Hammond, yes. yes. Uh, that was my ultimate drummer. Uh, I mean, just because, I mean, like I said, gospel is. is, is the, it's the foundation of my yeah. life. It's what taught me how to feel music. So Mario Winans, mm -hmm. Raymond Beatty, the, the, the drummers that people haven't really glorified too much. You know, um, it's those people that earlier in my days when I didn't have a face to put to a Marvin McCutty yeah. or to a Ma Mario Winans, yeah. I could feel the essence of what's, what's happening there. Correct, yeah. So I, I don't want to just come out and now name a name that yeah. all drummers are going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. the guy. It's like, no, 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 that yeah. guy actually did not inspire mm -hmm. me so because when I was a kid... Marvin McCready. All yeah, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Denver Furnace from Cape Town. He used mm -hmm. to play for Out of Town with Camilo and them. Mm -hmm. Like, those are one of the drummers that when I watched Jazz Studio back in the day, I don't know how old you are, bro, Amen. but Jazz Studio exposes my age for some people, yeah. you know. We used to watch and I used to see... Lulu Bra Lulu is one of the uh, um, legendary South African drummers who passed away as well. Yeah. Those are the guys who I was like, yo, yo, these cats can play, you mm. know? So um, I, cannot, I cannot just give credit to, to anybody when we're speaking about the early days of mine. Okay. Like Bogey, the guys from Mount Carmel, mm -hmm. Marlon Green, David Klaassen. I used to bump into those guys at gospel concerts. Yeah. And I'm like... Oh my God, what is he doing on his snare? And it was just ghost notes. I just right. didn't know what it was. You, just you know? Know. And that's when I realized, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. You know, so my education came literally through uh, 
I yeah, see. Like, and who's your current drummer now? Uh, like my one of my favorite drummers. I mean, I have to say Dominic McNabb. Mm. When I see myself in him, I see a different version of myself in him. Yeah. Um, some of my favorite drummers. I'm gonna mention some of the best. Just and, mention and, two. And not um, international. I'm gonna st keep it local. Okay. Ramon Ligon. R Those Ramon two Simpson. cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Those yeah. brothers. You went colored, eh? Yeah. Huh? No, 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 no. I mean, I'm just I'm, 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 I'm showing you. But they, they, I'm, I'm showing they, you the brothers that when I hear them play. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Those are the kind of things I was aspiring to. You know, when I watched the, my first Tony Royster, yeah. I was like, wow. But when I heard Ramon and them play, and I was mm. like, oh my God, we've got that here. Yeah. You know. I, then I bump into Sabu yeah. at some gigs, and I'm like, yo, this cat plays left. Oh, because. I started playing lefty because I met um, Simon Phillips yeah, yeah, in yeah. 1995 and he was like, oh, you play right, mm. do everything left. Mm. So I was playing left. So when I met Sab, I'm like, oh, this is a left-hand drama. Mm. So I was checking into, oh, you know, this cat has yeah. his own feel, his own flavor, Pafana. Then I met the guys as I was growing, you know. So a lot of these cats, they had their own feel, they had their own, I mean, they're Caesar. Rest in peace. Mm. The way he played with Tandiswa was one of my favorite dramas, mm. you know. So I don't, I don't want to go for the guys that are just in the light or whatever, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about these guys that when I listened to them as a drummer, mm -hmm. I was like, Phew. nah, 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 nah. No, nah we, we can do it. We are able. 100%. Yeah. I think South Africa's got great drummers, yes, man. I yes. think. And those aren't the only drummers. I'm just mentioning people who really made 100%. me feel like, you know? No, 100%. No, South Africa's got oof, the drumming yeah. now. It's yeah, yeah out of this world and the st different styles that South Africans can bro, play. Bro, bro, the way the guys are chopping now. It's I, I started cooking, I'm chopping chops. <laughs> I'm frying chops at home while the guys are chopping. You know? And tell me, you've never played on a DVD, on a gospel DVD? Uh, Which... No, I played Pretty Duncan's uh, Worship in Color album. Really? Yeah, I'm the drummer on there. Was, was it not your brother? Earlier days, no. He played, oh, on, the, the, he oh, played on, oh, the on the DVD. On the DVD. I played okay. on the recording of Worship okay. in Color, which is Early days, Patrick Duncan. Yeah. Like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, man, I love playing gospel, bro. Like, yeah. I think um, where I went in the industry, it pulled me away from where my heart was really at. Yeah. Like, I would have loved to play in a gospel setting. Not necessarily play for joyous or play, but be a choir drummer. Like, play that because that's the stuff that made me come out into the industry and play the way I play. Okay. That made people say, oh, this guy come with the gospel. No, it was gospel talk. God's, hey, 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 God's, hey, God's, because I was playing gospel so hard that when I came and played for the secular artist, whoever, I was playing and interpreting that same heart. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, oh, no, 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 I've got to, no, I was confident, mm -hmm. you know, because through my journey, I was also cut down by a lot of people. So I had to use this drumming as a ah, superpower, like, oh, okay, I, I, I ah, okay, I'm disadvantaged. Okay, mm -hmm. you're laughing at my shoes. Oh, you're laughing at the way I look. Mm. Your mother's money cannot buy this gift God gave me. Oh. When you see me play, mm. you'll understand why this man is this confident. So I've had to make my gift the thing that makes mm. me strong in front of people mm. when I felt weak. Uh. Because I wasn't always the guy who had everything. Mm. I wasn't always the uh, coolest guy looking, Correct. you know, yeah, you know. Yeah. So the drumming, God and the drumming in me made me feel like, yes, I can step into any room and they must just give me an opportunity, opportunity. and they'll see that I'm not what I look like. Amen. Do you understand? And, and, and it this was misinterpreted a lot because yeah. some people will might see it as arrogant or whatever, but it became a coping mechanism. Imagine being bullied. Imagine being, and now all you have to do is look inside yourself and say, <laughs> if they only knew. Half a chance. For, yeah, for some people it's like, ah, he thinks he's... Mm. But bro, if you only know how much I'm crying inside because of what they're saying. Correct. But if I don't look inside, I will break. I will break. So I have to look back inside and say, it's fine. Say what you want. Yeah. And, and, and the industry doesn't lie, man. I mean, you've worked with Brian Temba, Josie, Labuma Shile, Cabo Omu, Kunle, uh, Bianca, uh, DJ Switch, Benjamin Dube, Nezimu, Patrick Duncan, Liquid Deep, I mean, the list goes on. The, the, the Bala brothers. Wow. Lungi, Danny K, Loiso. Man, who have you not played with? The new guys. <laughs> I mean, I work with Nasty C. 
now. Yeah. And I um, know you work with TKZ. TKZ, well. yeah. I've been there drama since 2009. Really? Yeah. So um, that's been amazing, man. To grow with those guys, to yeah. grow in front of them, yeah. and to become one of their peers, you know, and yeah. to be. And what's said after after uh, Tukolo passed away? How how's the energy? <sighs> it's heavy. It's heavy, ne? But I think right now every show is like a tribute show. Ne? The, my gesh is the crowd. The crowd is my gesh. Really? Because they sing his parts. Oh yeah. We depend on them yes. to to bring him back to life. Yes. Do you understand? Yes, 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 yes. So when we are there and the guys are rapping his verses. I'm looking at the crowd like, bro, you are out there now. You're out there. You know? So it's difficult. I've, I mean, I've seen my brothers hold back their tears on stage mm -hmm. because they, we performed soon after his death. And I was like, guys, aren't you ready to take a break? I'm not even ready, mm -hmm. you know? But um, uh, I, I respect the guys and I commend them for their strength because with Magesha's absence, the gig has become way more valuable as well, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. And with all the rosy stuff you've said right now and all the nice stuff, traveling. I mean, you've seen the, the world through music, right? Yeah. You've traveled everywhere. You've slept mm -hmm. in the best hotels. You've, 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 get, you've gotten paid a lot of money from, from drumming, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you've seen it all. But not a lot of people talk, sub, talk about the, the disappointments or the letdowns of, of the industry, right? Yeah. And I want to pick it up from what you were talking about with, with Lira, right? Yeah. And, and everyone, everyone spoke about it, right? Some people were negative. Some people were positive. Some people were saying, man, it needed to be, sp to be said. Some people said, no, but this is going to close channels for this man, you know? No one is going to want to work with you because of, of how you deal with, 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 with people when you're, not, when you're upset. Mm -hmm. You go live. <laughs> <laughs> when this man is upset, he goes live. Um, but I'm interested for, for, for two reasons. Even after everything, uh, Yama still stayed with you, which showed that you actually give value and you're not as bad as people portray you to be. But the other thing is, from what we're seeing, you were having your time of your life with Lira. You were traveling everywhere, and I heard that you were getting paid, even if there were no gigs, so that you were exclusive to her. No. That's not true. No. No. <laughs> no. Was not that true. not true? Oh, who said it? I heard. You know, where's the proof? From, where's the statement? <laughs> from the grapevine, you know? Uh, said, uh, we were getting paid when there was no gigs. Yes, that... So that you. So don't while I was working with Kuli China, she was also paying me. While I was working with AK and them, she was also saying, "Oh, Josh, we never give this weekend. No, they but have some money. No. But then when we need our fee to go up, you don't give us." No, but my question to you was: no, Were you not no. exclusively? No, never play with exclusive. You know why I'm saying this? There was a year I can't remember which year it was. Lira was literally fully booked for the, literally for the whole year. Yeah. And corporates, I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen it sent in convention centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys were gigging, so I assumed you were exclusively playing for her. She sent the bookings through. She dotted our calendar before anyone could. Yeah. So when Kuli calls, I say, hey, bro, sorry, I'm in Nigeria with mm. Lira. Oh, I'm, you know. But I was always a free agent. I was always me. Ah, I see. So sometimes I would have, and they know this is true. This is why I'm looking at the camera. Sometimes they have called me to say, hey, Josh, uh, is there no one you can put in by Cooley or someone that can cover mm -hmm. for you? We really need you on this one. We can't do this show with a dip. Then I'd have to call Cooley and then refill her like, yo, bro, ish, can I not send um, this guy to cover? So there was those instances, but I was never exclusive to Lira. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it was as if we were, but we weren't paid as exclusive people. We were billed as, oh, no, 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 these are the guys on the DVDs. I mean, this is why the fee is this much. But when the fees come, the fees are low, and someone else is chowing the money. This is why the fight was. Because if you've got the people of the DVD on your stage at every time, you can definitely sell that, no, 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 these guys need to be paid proper money. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the guys, we're keeping it consistent for you. But the money never reflected for us. That's why I'm saying it's impossible for you to pay me when there was no gigs or have put me on a retainer when you can't pay me 5,000 rand a gig. I've never made 5,000 rand a gig with Lira. Impossible, man. I've never made 4,000 rand a gig with Lira. No, man. Yeah, I played inauguration. I played a Soweto Drum Beat Festival for the same fee. 
I played Egypt and I played Mera for Gerald for the same fee with Lira. All those years you saw me travel. The white man kept our fees as low as possible. Which white man? Her husband, her ex-husband. <laughs> you know? He literally, that's what he did. And he knows he did it. I mean, there's no reason why I cannot say it now. Yeah? I spoke to her one day while she's driving my BMW to go fetch up her dress at my house, at her house, right? And she said, oh, let me test drive your car. Oh, she's driving the car. So I'm like, yo, man, so when are we? This is 2014. So, you know, where is this fees going up, man? We're still playing for the same money. Oh, no, but I've been paying a raise. I pay a raise every year. And I said, wait a minute. What did you just say? Then I went back to the gents. I said, gents, Lee just told me she pays a raise every year. Mm-hmm. We're still stuck on 3-5. 3-5, there's yeah. no way you were playing yes, for 3-5. Yes, we, right? we were playing for 3-5. I've got invoices, I'll show you. Right? We went to the States and did 12 shows and got 15,000 rand. Nah, bro, no ways. They paid dollars that side, man. No, remember, guys, it's a new territory. We're breaking in, you know. We won't be able to cover full fees, but, you know, everything will be covered on the road and wara, wara, wara. And then, while we're taking that knock financially and going out there, there's cameras shooting us, doing our thing. So now there's a reality show off the back of us sacrificing for someone's career in a new territory. Then they put that thing out and give you 5,500 train for the whole season that's all over the world. And this was not Lira, right? This is Lira and Robin. I will not say Lira did not know because I will make myself a fool if I act like that grown woman did not know what was going on around her. Amen. Do you understand? So it's just the truth, bro. I mean, I cannot sit here and lie to you about stuff that I've already survived. Mm. Wait a minute. I'm on the other side of this. But DVD, so for a DVD, there's no ways, man. People no, no, no. Obviously, DVD, then it's, oh, guys, we'll do a 7K fee for the DVD. Or, bro. No, bro. Bruh. Ask Breezy and them. 10K, uh, the DVDs that goes platinum, these DVDs sell. We have no stake. And you must know. She's the only person that ever went up on a stage, accepted a, a Sama Award for a DVD, that couldn't say, and my music director. Who's the music director? They didn't want to put my name there because then publishing, fees. So you wait know? a minute. So. You are not just a drummer then. Bro, I've got rehearsal tapes of me singing lines to the guitarist, coming up with this, saying, hey, let's do that. The Nokia ad showed you who was doing these things. The Nokia ad shows you the music director. There was just an idea of what was actually happening. Ask the guys. Let them go live and say, Josh is lying. He never told us. Then I'm going to pull out the rehearsal tapes. Because remember, I'm the Nokia guy. I always had my camera up recording. Mm. So I've got the proof. I'm working on my documentary so that people can see that this man is not a liar. This man is not emotional when he goes live. Do you understand? Because like you say, ah, when I'm upset, I go live or whatever. But bro, imagine how many people sit quietly and let everyone suffer with them when their voice can make a change for everyone. Not Joshua Zekis. Mm. I'll speak up and it, and it can kill me, but it will help you. It's okay. It's worth it. My brother, let's talk, to, let's talk about uh, the reason why you came here today. I'm you know? so scared. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And uh, before, 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 before we go into that, um, you said a statement in, in your live, and, and I called her. I said, "Quickly, quickly, quickly, come see this. It's happening here." And she ran upstairs, and I, you said, "People can use you in the name of Jesus." Uh, uh, and then, and then you say, "Pastors should not address musicians on the pulpit." And, 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 then the, and then I saw a video of the past, a pastor saying, uh, musicians don't contribute anything financially to the kingdom. Yeah, they're useless to the kingdom. Useless to the kingdom. And they don't tithe or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't want to hold you on this one, right? Um, so is that, is that where the problem started? Um, you mean before I went live? Before when went I live. saw that? Yes. Because I used to be at the church, yes. I used to be there. I used to serve there. I wanted to serve there. Yeah. You know, I wanted to bring everything I know and just be part of the system. But 
while I was there, I saw that nah, something else is running this church or something else is running what's mm -hmm. supposed to happen. We can't be as effective as we can be for God as we know we can be. Mm -hmm. And after leaving there, a few fights with the people and I've seen a lot of toxicity that's not ungodly, I left. And then to go on social media and get a message from someone saying, yo, what about Seri Pastor Fayela? I'm like, of us? Because I know they used to post me on that stage. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. The same people that did one, two, three, four are now saying these things. So let me go and set the record straight. I didn't want to because mm -hmm. if I have to just tell you, I've reached out to the pastor numerous times. Pastor, let's have a meeting. Let's sort this out. Or, you know, what happened? You know, why am I not on the stage anymore? I was ignored, bro. Mm. Like it's so painful to, to even go visit the church hoping that the pastor will see you and say, let's talk. Mm. I go visit the church. He calls me up to sing and then ignores me after that. And then I'm like, pastor, I'm here to find out why am I not on the stage? Mm. No, we'll set up a meeting. Blue tick. Oh. So now I speak out because remember he used this platform to be emotional, mm -hmm. to speak his mind and speak his pain. And I used my platform to speak my mind. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting calls from the clergy. Now I'm getting calls from, oh, the pastor would like to meet with him. I'm thinking, but come on. I've reached out. Oh, come on. You ignored me. Now you're getting big bishops to call me because you want to sit.